It is our privilege to uh, talk with Mrs. Parvi Maria Raysenen, if I pronounce that yes, you may co co correct me afterwards anyway, from Finland. She is a Christian as well as a mother and a grandmother. She trained as a medical doctor and has served as a member of parliament since 1995. Mrs. Rasanen was, amongst other positions, the Minister of the Interior of Finland between 2011 and 2015. She is known for her traditional Christian views on ethics and advocates biblical views on marriage and alternative expressions of sexuality. Let's start with the medical doctor part first. Please could you tell us a little about your motivation to rather do preventative care in politics rather than to treat patients in the surgery? Yes, that is a good question because uh, it, it was wonderful to work as a medical doctor, as a physician. And uh, it, it was my dream as, as a young child to be sometimes a doctor. But um, at the time when I studied medicine, uh, uh, I was involved in uh, pro-life issues, in campaigning for, for the conscience of, of medical doctors uh, to not to do abortions, for example. And um, it was a very, very important question to me. And when, when I then started uh, to work as a, as, as a physician, I decided that I would not uh, write these uh, statements for abortions or, or uh, involve in, in doing them. And I was also quite active in, in uh, discussion in, in debates, uh, I, I arranged some uh, some um, panel discussions in our universities, and and I wrote some books, <laughs> and and I, I was also in TV and radio debates about abortion and 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 other uh, medical other questions of medical ethics, and. And then I, I was not interested actually about politics, but then I have to say that um, there, there became more and more um, requests and, and questions if I would like to stand for elections. And uh, my husband was the first who encouraged me to that. He, he thought that it would be good to, uh, to try to uh, impact these things and fight for, for these values in, in, in uh, parliament. <laughs> and, and then also there were other issues. Just in the beginning of 90s, we had uh, a financial economical recession and when I was working as a doctor, I could see many such um, situations where, uh, for example, uh, unemplo un unemployment or problems with businesses, it, it carried the people uh, to some kind of mental problems and, and I, I could see uh, uh, divorces and suicides in families so it was quite um, it, it was quite difficult time and I, I thought that I would like to uh, effect to the roots of the problems and not only to give medicines and, and so, yes, and the so these, these were yes. perhaps the reasons why I then uh, said yes <laughs> to these questions uh, and and um, I, I was in, in our society and in my area, I, I was in some way, I was uh, already known because of these uh, 
medical these um, issues of medical ethics uh, where I was for example in TV and so on so so I have been in Parliament since 1995 and my main um, main aim my main purpose was to fight for the Christian values in in our society yeah so it's uh, really that same D drive of caring for human life, but then in an infrastructural way that to, 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 to tackle the, as you said, the roots of uh, the, the problems. Yes. Rather than fixing uh, symptoms. Yes. So you're really a doctor in politics in that uh, <laughs> in in that way, and uh, and pro life in more than one respect. You're also a mother and a wife. How did you manage to combine the three, especially when your children were little? Ah, yes, I I have had a privilege that um, we have had a very good uh, network uh, from our relatives. For example, my mother and father they moved near us, and they were a lot of uh, with with my family helping helping there and of course there were times when it was not easy but uh, but uh, I have discussed afterwards with my children <laughs> and they said that they have not suffered for 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 these years uh, and of course uh, the most important thing was that my husband uh, was uh, he 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 was so much supporting and and he 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 thought that uh, this is our uh, this is our common calling <laughs> he has also his his career he he is uh, a theologian doctor <laughs> and and a pastor in 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 Finnish Lutheran church and he is nowadays a principal of of a, of a missionary school uh, and and so so um, we have a lot we have done a lot of work uh, together for example uh, for uh, marriages and and so on great right to hear you already mentioned that it's really because of your husband that uh, that he was supportive of you moving into politics uh, traditionally, Christian women have been hesitant to be involved in politics for more than one reason. It's a not, not a nice and pleasant scenery to be in, particularly not in today's world. Not only because it can be nasty business, but also because it's perceived as taking up uh, authority over men. Some, something which, uh, for example, the Apostle Paul uh, has a few things uh, to say he discourages that in uh, 1 Timothy, for instance. Mm. And uh, general Christian culture in Western society seems to have followed that more or less until uh, the secular culture has been taking over since the 1970s. In, in your view, does 20th century general suffrage uh, general voting rights also for women which came in the 20th uh, century and then also in representation um, does that outdate scripture in this respect or do you mm. perhaps consider yourself on a mission similar to, uh, to the Deborah's uh, um, mm. the no man doing it someone has to do it uh, here am I Yes, yes, this is a very good question, and I, I have thought a lot of these issues in front of the Bible. <laughs> and I, first, I have to say that I'm not a feminist, <laughs> and uh, I, I believe in uh, what the Bible teaches about the biblical order of creation, that in, in, in family and in, in church it is... Uh, uh, God has ordered uh, a male leadership. So I, I think that, for example, that, that my husband is the head of our family. And, and, but I, I think that it doesn't mean that uh, the women 
would not have also active roles in in society and in church and in in family <laughs> but 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 uh, in in church and in in family uh, if if we read what apostles have have taught I, I i think that the leadership should be male that's why for example in in my um Finnish Lutheran mission where we are active, <laughs> which is our, uh, I would say, some kind of uh, uh, congregational background, background, spiritual background, uh, uh, we do not accept uh, female pastors. We have only only male pastors. But but uh, I, I think that uh, also. We we can have female leadership, for example, in society in in some some uh, in in some positions. Uh, but um, especially, I I have I have of course uh, I, I think that my my most important roles are that I'm wife <laughs> of my husband and I'm mother to my five children now grandmother to to 11 grandchildren. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yes, thank you. She's only three weeks old, the youngest one. And and uh, the, now now the twelfth is is on her way. <laughs> so I'm 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 very happy with this with this. But I'm also I I have also felt felt that it has been my calling to fight for uh, Christian values in our society. And 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 uh, so I I have had a very strong feeling all the time that this has been been my calling and of course uh, the key issue has been that that my my husband has been backing it and and in yes. fact it was his his idea. Yes, you've done it's, it's, in the beginning. You've just been doing what your husband tells you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, because uh, I I remember when we were. Uh, I, I'm just now. I'm in Parliament House, sitting there in my office, and when uh, it it was uh, thirty years ago when we we were in car driving. Uh, here near and and we saw the parliament house and my my, my husband said that look at your <laughs> future <laughs> it is there <laughs> and I, I said no i don't <laughs> think so but but he had a very strong vision that that i have that kind of talents uh, that mm. uh, would be used in 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 this this place so Yes, I, I think that in our marriage it has been very important to have a mutual support for each other. I have also a lot uh, <laughs> supported him in his in his uh, vocation, in his uh, calling uh, as as a Bible teacher and 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 pastor. Yes, it's great that you've been uh, able to. Uh... Not only have you witnessed in politics, but to lead by example in family life as well, because uh, the traditional family is such an important building block for society, and it's uh, yeah. uh, pr presently attacked uh, uh, everywhere in Europe, I would say, uh, the Netherlands included. Mm. Shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, not as far as Christian witness is concerned, but uh, also uh, godly building blocks, building stones are likely to uh, uh, attract the devil's attention. Mm. Uh, Paul says, indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Up till about 10 years ago, it seemed relatively safe still to respectfully express Christian views on sexuality. But this changed with the rise of identity politics. In your case, 2019 was a year of watershed. What happened and why? Yes. Um... <clears throat> In, in fact, the whole process has been a big surprise for me because uh, all the, all, during all these years, 
I have had the same use. I have had the same uh, same beliefs and same faith. And I have been all the time open about my faith. Uh, and uh, for example, about uh, issues about gender and and marriage and 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 uh, sexuality. Uh, but um, on 20, 2019, in the summertime, uh, I was shocked when I heard that the leadership of my church, of the Finnish Lutheran Evangelical Lutheran Church, which is the main church in Finland, 70% people of, of Finnish population belong to that church. And it, um, the leadership of the church uh, announced its support to Helsinki Pride event. And at that time, many of my friends decided uh, to resign the church, to leave the church because of, of that, uh, what bishops had <laughs> said. Mm. And, and uh, um, I was also very worried that, um, especially about, about uh, the um, uh, trust on the Bible, because I was worried that if if our bishops are um, are teaching something that is so clearly against what Bible teaches, it undermines people's trust on Bible, and then it's not anymore only about. Uh, about uh, gender or marriage or sexuality, but also about salvation. If people can't trust on the Bible, how, how can they trust what Jesus has done for them? How, how can they find that they are sinners and they are in need of, of, of Jesus and, and forgiveness of their sins? And I was, <laughs> I was praying. I, I was on, on my knees praying. I had the Bible in front of me and, and I prayed that what should I do now? Uh, should I also leave at the church? And, and I, I got a very clear vision that it is not my time now to try to rescue me <laughs> and jump out of the sinking boat, <laughs> but, but to try to wake up those who are there sleeping, and and then in in a few minutes I <laughs> took a photo from the Bible from the uh, first chapter of the Romans, where Apostle Paul teaches about uh, about these issues, and um, wrote the Twitter update where I questioned the leadership of my church that how does this fit. To the what, what you have decided to the foundation of the church uh, when you are celebrating something as pride what the bible uh, calls as sin and as shame and my husband was uh, heating sauna <laughs> at, at that time and I went to sauna and, and said to my husband that I, I wrote a Twitter update that do you want to hear what I wrote and uh, he said that yes this is okay <laughs> but after that uh, I, 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 I couldn't imagine what kind of discussion would begin uh, after that, I had an open discussion in, in public with uh, the Archbishop of the Finnish uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church. And, and some citizen made a criminal complaint of, of my Twitter update. And uh, police started to investigate to <laughs> my, my, what, what I have wrote. And, and then when it came into public, there became more and more criminal complaints about my writings, about my uh, uh, speeches in, in TV debates or radio debates. And for example, there was, there was um, a pamphlet that I had written uh, to the purposes of church, a church pamphlet uh, already 20 years ago. And so, this was the beginning of, of the story, how, how it started. 
Yes. And what 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 happened uh, next? Because you ended up in court. Yes. Uh, then uh, I had several long police interrogations. I was sitting in the police station, and the police was asking me <laughs> very That's theoretical dreadful. questions. Yeah. It it was it was absurd. It was unreal, really, because I I had the Bible on the table, and the police was asking me. Uh, what is the concept of sin? What do you mean by the word of sin? Uh, what is the message of the first chapter of Romans? Was it, what is the message of the whole book of Romans? <laughs> and so on. And, and it, it took uh, over 13 hours for these interrogations altogether. And, and then uh, the police didn't find crime in my writings. The police said that, uh, he, he, in fact, he said that if my, for example, if my booklet about what I had re r written, male and female, he created them, was the title of the booklet. Uh, he, he, he gave a statement that if, if it would be banned, this booklet, then also the Bibles should be banned because there are similar or even <laughs> yeah. more. <laughs> yeah, even more obvious in its states yes. yes. statement than, than yes. you have done over the past yeah. years. Yes, yes, then, but even, even though the police didn't find any crime from my writings, the prosecutor general. Uh, decided uh, to file up the charges. And he, she asked uh, the police to continue the investigations. And, and then two years ago, the charges were, were filed. And what was very difficult was that uh, there, were, there were several uh, falls uh, claims about my statements. Uh, the prosecutor claimed something that I had not said. And, and uh, for example, she claimed that I had said that uh, homosexual people are inferior to other people, that or that God has not even created them. I have not said anything like that. I have also time said that all people are created as image of God. All people are equal. And, and, and we all are sinners. And it is God who says what is sin and what is not sin. And, and we all are in need of grace of Jesus. So we are on the same line. I, I said it again and again to the police and, and <laughs> in court and in my writings. But uh, then last year we had the trials of uh, two days trial of Helsinki District Court and I, I got a good result from that <laughs> and uh, unanimous acquittal of all these three charges that that uh, I had and then but the prosecutor decided to appeal to the court of appeals and now uh, in the end of August and beginning of September we had another trial in in the Helsinki court of appeals and again I got acquittal unanimous acquittal from three judges. So <laughs> this has been the process. Yes, and that's uh, something that's been dragging on for uh, for a few uh, years. Uh, the prosecutor still might not give up. Uh, where does it stand at the moment? Will there be another uh, higher appeal? <laughs> Yes, I don't know it uh, yet, because um, uh, when the result of uh, the Court of Appeals, it was announced uh, 14th of uh, uh, November, and uh, the prosecutor has um, 60 days time to apply to the Supreme Court, 
And the state prosecutor has said that she considers to appeal, that she thinks that it, it would be good to appeal. We, I, I, I don't yet know what happens. Yeah, so we'll have to wait and see. Oh, I'm waiting. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it feels uh, like a bit of a travesty of justice. Uh, there's some frivolous element that, that someone uh, doesn't want to give up and uh, give someone a, 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 other people with different views than her diff difficult time of life. But anyway, you don't have to respond to that. Uh, what is important, your case seems to be indicative of an international development in identity activism. During the past year, 10 years especially, principled Christians seem to be actively targeted, uh, particularly because of their views on uh, sexuality that seems to be the holy cow of our age in 2015 when i was still in australia the roman catholic archbishop of hobart was sued for a booklet which was called don't mess with marriage which was distributed to church uh, goers and school children in the archdiocese it argued like uh, people like myself would do, that same-sex marriage and same-sex parenting is harmful too and messes with kids. The complaint was dropped in 2017 and never made it to the tribunal after two conciliation meetings. But it did give the Archbishop two nasty years of uh, persecution. Uh, where he wasn't able to attend fully to his normal business, etc. Uh, distraction, insecurity, while well, the process lasted. Yours has lasted some four years now and may still not have ended. How, how have you experienced this? What was difficult and perhaps uh, what was good? Yes, uh if I first say the difficult part, <laughs> the most difficult was uh, that uh, the, the false accusations, the false yeah. statements, the lies, because uh, it, it was so difficult to defend yourself if you, you, you get lies about what you have said. And when the prosecutor general, who is in high office, when she published her her um, press release where she, uh, she said that uh, Päivi Rasanen has said that uh, homosexual people are inferior to other people and, and uh, that God has not created these people and th that they are genetically degenerated and, and so on. Uh, after that, even though I tried to defend myself in public and, and sent my own press <laughs> releases that I have not said that. I, I don't think so. This is against my conviction. Of course, as Christian, I, I think that God has created all people and and we all are equal. Uh, our mainstream media didn't even publish my press releases. And, and it took one year until the uh, trial, until the result of the Helsinki District Court <laughs> when, when I, I was acquitted for, from these false statements because the, the, the court, the judges said very clearly that they didn't find these false statements from my writings or from my speeches. Uh, so it was the difficult part, <laughs> the lies. Yeah, but, yeah, the lies and the distortions, uh, yeah, because yes. f for what I've been following of uh, this process, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, you, you give the impression of uh, uh, someone who is motivated by Christian uh, Christian love. That's uh, yes. you, you, yes. you don't yes. even have to be explicit about it. That sort of uh, radiates from your personality and the way you do things. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yes. and then it would hurt the more if people make such lies and, and, and distortions. Uh, uh, 
but, but one of the good parts I notice in your words is that uh, uh, the, the justice system in Krim, in Finland st still seems to function. And yes, yes, really. in, in, in truth rather than media construction. <laughs> Yes, yes, I have to say that I'm very grateful for our court system and, and it has it has uh, strengthened my trust in our our court system and the rule of law. So yeah. so and I hope that it will would continue also in, in Supreme Court if the, if this goes there. But you asked also that what has been the good point. I have felt this process as a privilege. It, it really has been as a privilege to, to defend freedom of speech, freedom of faith, and also these biblical issues. And what has been most important and most, um, what, what has given most happiness to me and most joy is that this whole process has given so many chances, so many positive possibilities to testify about Jesus, about uh, the forgiveness of sins in public, that I would never have had such so wide audience <laughs> to this testimony without this process. So I, I'm so thankful that uh, that I, I have got possibility in front of police and in, in, in our courts and, and in, in press conferences uh, to have, for example, live broadcasts to finish homes to tell that what is the solution to the problem of sin in the Bible, that, that Jesus has died for our sins. And in, in also in, in some TV debates <laughs> and so on. So, and... And I have got thousands and thousands of messages from Finnish people who have told that this case has encouraged them to pray and to discuss also in schools and in, in, in their uh, work, <laughs> working places about, about, uh, about also about their faith. And also people have told that they have started to read Bible. They have started to read the book of Romans. <laughs> what is it about? And, and I have got also messages from gay people who have told that they have found Christ when ha they have started to read Bible. I, 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 I just got a message from, from a gay <laughs> who, who told that he, he, he was gay and, and he... He was very angry to me in past years, but but now he wants to apologize me what he has said to her, his friends, and now he he agrees with me <laughs> with all these issues. So amazing. I, I think that God has used used this this process in in His own purposes. Also. Has so, it brought you closer together as a as a family and to other Christians as well? Yes, yes, it, it has, and and of course, I I'm I'm so grateful to God that that I have had all the time the perfect support from my family. I have five <laughs> adult children who who all support me and and they are they are christians and 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 they send messages me me and they are praying praying for me my oldest son was in in the trial also with me supporting and so it has it it has been such such a privilege to have the support of family and also from so, from so many 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 christians when when this process started um, in in Finland, there was also founded an association defending freedom of speech and freedom of faith for Christians, and from different churches and different denominations, uh, very well known <laughs> Christians joined to that association. So it is also it has been defending. Because 
Unfortunately, my case will not be the only one. <laughs> there are also many Christians who have difficulties at our time uh, when, when they are open, open about their faith. They, they, they will, will have difficulties. What For would example, you say to them? What have you learned as a result? Are there any spiritual disciplines or yeah. tex tactics which you would recommend? For Christians individually, but perhaps also for Christian organizations, which might find themselves in a similar position of persecution. Yes, I, I first I I want to say that um, we are living now in that kind of time, in that kind of era, that it is very important now to use the rights that we have to be open about your faith and and also to teach uh, openly what bible <laughs> what bible teaches about these controversial issues of today uh, it is important for young people because if we do not <laughs> we older people if we do not do it uh, how, how could they get courage <laughs> yeah. to to uh, to believe and to trust on the bible so it is it is now important uh, to uh, to use these rights because the more we are silent, the more that we are tr we try to hide these uh, biblical uh, teachings <laughs> about these controversial issues, uh, the narrower becomes the space for yeah. these freedoms. It doesn't help to be silent. It. <laughs> It's the it, same with uh, bullies in the schoolyard, school yes. court. The, the the more you give in, the more they will demand. Yes, yes, just so. So that's why I I, I think that uh, we now need courage in in our in our Christian uh, uh, societies and. Yeah, but and, I, I do uh, notice a problem there because. Uh, Looking back, uh, some of your problems uh, started in the one place you perhaps never expected it to start, in in the church of all places. Yes. Uh, so we live in days where churches no, no longer necessarily uphold the, the authority of the scriptures, which is part of the problem. Yes, it is. Uh, it is the main problem, I, I, yeah. I think so. If your church doesn't do it, you have to do it at home. Uh, but yes. in some way, it has yes. to be transmitted to the next generation and yes. also in practice that you show it really works, even in persecution, as your life shows. Yes, yes. Yes, and, and then another thing what I have learned and experienced is that really god is faithful what he has promised he keeps and and i have got so much joy <laughs> in these ordeals that um, i i i uh, i wouldn't have got <laughs> this joy without these these uh, charges <laughs> so so Yes, yes, I, I, I think that uh, what, what Jesus has promised that he is every day with us. And I have experienced, for example, when I was first time interrogated in the police station, I, I, could, I could feel how the people are praying and, and how Jesus was there with me. <laughs> and so and also in court and it, it gives so deep joy <laughs> that that he he really he he stands for his promises and mm. and we can we can trust trust on him i imagine you in a situation like that interrogation what do you do do you shoot up a, a silent prayer to heaven lord give me the right words or so or, yes. or help <laughs> Uh, yes, but yes, it was it was so absurd 
to be there because just a few years ago I was the Minister of Interior in charge of the police and then I was <laughs> sitting there and it it was <laughs> it was crazy because uh, I I had imagined something like that happen in 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 past Soviet Union or in in Belarus or in North Korea but it is happening in Finland yes, <laughs> so it, it was it was crazy and all, at every time I, I was interrogated three times and on each time the police also gave me a chance he gave me gave me a possibility to to renounce what i have said uh, and and uh, he he gave two weeks time <laughs> to take away these writings but i answered that i i i will not i i will not um uh, apologize what Apostle Paul teaches. <laughs> yes, yes, you're a good, good Lutheran. Here I stand. <laughs> yes, can do yes, no, no it else. Is, <laughs> it is God's word. It is God's word, and it is, it is, it is not only about this life. It is also about eternity. Yeah. It is all also about eternity. <laughs> what, what you mentioned about uh, being the. Min former Minister of the Interior and being interrogated brings us to uh, uh, the present state of democracy and the rule of law in Europe. Uh, I trust every Christian will be happy, You're very happy indeed, that the courts have uh, up upheld your right to express biblical convictions, because that helps every Christian in Europe, I would say. So a measure of justice seems to rule still. However, to people like myself, it's of great concern that someone can be harassed for years for expressing views that were pretty mainstream until only some years ago. On top of this, in many Western countries, justice through the legal system is only something that the rich people can afford. That's the situation in Australia, for instance. Uh, you need, to, like... Uh, uh, thinking of some of the processes where people were justified in the end, like Cardinal Pell, who couldn't have done what he was accused of. <clears throat> it was only because he uh, had powerful and uh, financially well-equipped friends that there was uh, some justice uh, in, in, in the end. Um, the result of, because normal people are reading about this in newspapers and they think I'm uh, small and vulnerable and the result is that Christians uh, less prominent than yourself uh, opt out and do self-censure and don't talk about Jesus and his values anymore because someone could be offended. You never know what they do. Mm. What's your response to that? Uh, what would you say to yes. those Christians? Yes, I, 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 I very well understand, and because this process has taken a lot of time, <laughs> and also it is expensive, as you, you mentioned. Yeah. So, when when this started, we of course with with my family, we 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 uh, talked together with our children also that. This might be very expensive <laughs> to our family. And all agreed that we go on. We do not give up. So 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 long as it needs and, and so much as it needs. And uh, so I I'm I'm so I, I think that I'm privileged that I have this kind of background and, and support yeah. from not everyone has. And but but I had this 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 support, and and then then uh, I didn't know anything about, for example, Alliance Defending Freedom International, ADF International, which is a network for of of uh, of um, uh, lawyers who who are. Uh, helping especially christians in 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 this kind of problems and in 
defending freedom of speech and freedom of faith. And they have been also very supportive. It has been a great, great uh, support. And I'm very, very thankful for, for them because th this, this has gained uh, in international uh, attention. <laughs> I couldn't oh, yes. imagine also that. that and, and also in Finland, the association that was founded, it, is, it has also been supporting. There have been many, many Christians who have, who have said that they want to support, support also financially <laughs> during this process. So, so I, I have got a, a, lot of, a lot of support and I'm, I'm very, very grateful and all, especially for, for, for prayers. <laughs> prayers of, of people. Yes. So it, it has been so amazing that I, ha I get messages from, uh, from, uh, from America and from, from um, New Zealand and from Australia, from people who tell that they are praying for Finland and praying for our family. Uh, what a privilege it is. <laughs> and, yes, and, uh, and I, as, I, as you I, remain I, faithful, your uh, encouragement also to say the small people uh, because it does have effect on jurisprudence, uh, yeah. and and the more prominent Christian people uh, who are attacked don't give in. Uh, that, that sort of sets an example. Mm -hmm. So that's really what you have been doing, leading yes. by example. And, and the, I, the I, I also have has have thought that if when when God raises thousands and thousands of people. From different countries to pray for Finland. Yeah. I think he has something good in his mind <laughs> for Finland. <laughs> so yes, yes that's I, a sign of hope. <laughs> yes, it is. A, it is really a sign of hope. Yeah, because it, it it encourages dependence uh, of, yes. of people on God. Uh, because yes. that's really what prayer is about. And yes. It, it's, uh, uh, yeah, you, if 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 you give thousands of people a cause of prayer for the good reasons, that's marvelous. Yes, it is really. Yes, it is. Uh, sexual ethics is not an isolated issue. In recent years, uh, the the public realm in Western Europe has uh, only admitted approved views. You talked about the mainstream media. Uh, it's not only sexual ethics, uh, whether it's immigration, gas, the Ukraine war, corona, lockdowns and vaccination, etc. Um, freedom of speech has become uh, a vulnerable asset in the public uh, d d domain, many t mm. topics. Um, how do we retrieve truth in a postmodern world where people act under the delusion that 50% plus one or uh, what's ever broadcast on the channels and written into the newspapers uh, is the truth for the day. Mm. How do we get back to real truth? Uh, yes. I, I think that it is it is so important that we are rooted in the word of god and that uh, the bible is that uh, the pastors in in churches and in in uh, different um, christian uh, christian associations uh, in in finland we have for example inside the church we have some conservative Christian associations uh, that are working like like uh, like uh, like congregations that that we uh, courageously uh, and truthfully uh, hear and and teach what Bible teaches also about these controversial issues of today. It is especially important for young Christians, for children and, and youth, <laughs> that they learn to trust on, on the word of God. And, um, 
and um, we need more and more also mutual encouragement uh, because um, we we need um, to be together <laughs> and to encourage each other uh, and especially young people <laughs> in yes yeah, the in... people know hey i see the truth as well you're not deluded you'll you'll find this is the real world yes yes yeah yeah because if uh, uh, if everyone accepts the new clothes of uh, the emperor as something yeah. uh, wonderful, uh, why it isn't, then you meet that little boy who peeps up and says, uh, but he is not wearing anything. Yeah. And, uh, then people start to agree about the truth and, uh, mm. and touch it again. Yes. The European Union has actively promoted identity politics both in Europe and worldwide through the UN programs. Uh, presently, about 80% of the political discussions uh, or, or, or effects of discussions uh, um, are taken in Brussels, only 20% still locally, and that's true for any European country, I suppose. So Europe is something we need to watch. But one of the spearheads of Europe is to facilitate uh, LGBTQ and all sorts of uh, non-Christian views on uh, beginning of life and end of life um, in the overall of Western education, particularly the past uh, 30 years. So children are being call it brainwashed, indoctrinated from the age uh, three or four these days. Uh, uh, also with identity politics, uh, it's, uh, it's probably not very good for the mental health of society if uh, uh, children are being taught to be unsure whether they're a boy or a girl. And we see that in the mental health uh, results of uh, youth already. Uh, it's not only this actively through education, it's also hundreds of millions of uh, dollars or euros uh, into uh, neo-colonialism, uh, the export of liberal European uh, values to, to Africa, and they, that's increasingly... Uh, uh, not being appreciated in African countries, uh, to uh, to put it mildly. Uh, what can we do to either change the course of the EU and make people see the light that this is not really healthy or not really, <laughs> really not healthy at all uh, for our future, for the... Uh, uh, way society is put together because uh, we're going to it's going to be obvious that this is not uh, not healthy the fatherless society the mixed up youth etc what can we do to convince Europe or uh, do we have to break with Europe mm. but, but a country like the Netherlands uh, the, the UK here uh, uh, faces that problem after Brexit if uh, 60 or 70 per percent of your population goes along with identity politics anyway you might be worse off uh, as seems to be the situation in Britain so yes. what are your ideas? Yes uh, it, it is it is the same in European level and also in national level in in for example, in, in my country, uh, there has happened a huge change during these past decades of my, <laughs> my uh, lifetime. Uh, what, what has happened? If, if I think, for example, when I started as, as, a, as a member of parliament 28 years ago, uh, if, if someone had asked at that time that how many genders there are <laughs> it, it, yeah. Only it would one, have been very stupid <laughs> yes it, it was self clear that there are male and female <laughs> and man and woman and and uh, and so on 
but um, I, 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 I think that uh, the more that we see the fruits, fruits of, of the the identity politics and the LGBTQ uh, politics, uh, the people get more and more awakened. Because, um, for example, in, in many countries, they have now seen that what happens if if we teach the children that uh, that uh, you have to decide yourself, your gender, and and to to have um, this um, trans uh, trans politics <laughs> in, and uh, operations and and medication to to young people uh, and. Uh, so, so um, there there, ha there has already happened changes in, in, in some countries in, in their politics when, when they have seen what kind of mental health problems uh, come to children and to young people because of, uh, of, of this uh, uh, bad, bad family politics. Yeah. So... <laughs> So I, I, I think that of course, um, as as Christians, we 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 have to teach Bible, but but also in in politics and in in national politics and in European level, we have to talk about uh, about also the fruits. Of yeah, the is this healthy or not? Yes. And what is yes. The, yes. the medical bill uh, and uh, yes. both mentally and, and and physically for a society? That practices that. Uh, yeah. It's it's interesting because uh, uh, my Dutch Reformed Church has uh, a confessional document that's called the Belgic Confession, and in its Article Two, it says that God reveals Himself in two ways: first, in creation and upholding creation, the way things work in in in, in practice. Uh, uh, like uh, biologically, uh, men obviously made for women uh, for biological reasons. And if you practice a different uh, a lifestyle, there's a med medical bill attached to, uh, to, to, to it. Uh, th th those are facts of life which are uh, undeniable whether you, uh, you're a believer or, 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 or not. And that's the same we find in Scripture, uh, Psalm 19, Psalm 119, uh, Romans, as you mentioned, that, yeah. that God uh, reveals by the way he created things how they are intended. And if you use the manual, it works, but if you don't, uh, uh, the, the apparatus might break down. Mm. Or, uh, yes. Or worse. So you're basically saying uh, we can convince Europe to point out the practical consequences, to, regardless uh, of of the faith paradigm. Yes, and I, I I think also that the time you mentioned COVID time and uh, all these restrictions that came very quickly during that time to to the freedom of assembly or yeah. or gather together or or uh, travel and and so on the yeah, office of dying people in hospital yes. in 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 fact also in finland we had inside finland we had restrictions to travel from one place to to another and police was there on the border <laughs> And so it was so crazy. And I, I think that now when people have now uh, awakened that how easily we lose these freedoms, that yeah. we have thought that they are important for us, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom to travel and 
and uh, more from one place to another. It is, they are, they, we, we are in our societies have been so quick <laughs> to lose these freedoms. And I, I think that this has uh, now, when the time of COVID is over and, and we, we try to think about it, uh, uh, it has frightened people that how easily <laughs> yeah. we lose these freedoms. And also my case, uh, many, many those people who disagree with me, who, who are atheists or, or uh, even gay people, uh, they have also said that it is frightening that uh, my freedom of speech uh, has, has been in so vague <laughs> foundation that, that it, is, it is so easily, easily restricted. So, uh, so that that's why I, I, I think that now it it would be a good time for us us to use all these freedoms that we have. <laughs> yes, because Sorry. we yes realize how, how precious they are. Yes. Uh, you've done wonderfully well. I've got uh, a final question for you. In this present spiritual environment, uh, what can normal Christians do to protect and preserve their values as well as uh, the children, grandchildren, churches, and Christian organizations? Yes, I I think that the most important for all all of us, for all Christians, is that we we stay with Jesus. <laughs> That, that we we live with him, we hear his word and and we follow him. So then when we live with him and in, in, in and follow him, then then we have something to give to us to other people. <laughs> and and that's why I, I think that it is so important for all Christians to be rooted, in the word of God, to read it daily, and and to attend to Sunday, to, to services of the church, and and to pray with other other Christians, and and live live our Christianity with with other 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 Christians, and and also it is very very important in in families to 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 raise our children. In, in Christian faith. So I think that this very very simple <laughs> simple Christian Christian life it is it is it is still the basis <laughs> for everything. Yes, any Christian can do it. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much uh, for this uh, interview and uh, our, our best regards to your wonderful husband and family. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you.